Hey there, Chad with Prodigal's Customer Success Team here. In this video, we're going to go over the schedule page and all the different views, options, and functionality that you have therein. From here on the home screen, you can see the go to schedule button. It does the same exact thing as on the navigation bar, clicking the schedule tab. The one thing I'd like to mention here before we head over to the schedule page is that our schedule is a people-based schedule organized by worker. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to let you know is as well, the projects page and the tasks page are directly linked to the schedule page. When you make a change in one, it updates both of the others. So say I change something in the schedule, the tasks page and the project timelines will be updated. If I edit something in the project timeline, Line, it will move in the schedule and it will move on the tasks page and so on and so forth. So that's just one quick thing that I like to mention uh, because all of those three scheduling views are linked up. They're just different ways of looking at and keeping your business on track. All of your workers often operate out of the task page. It's a very easy way for them to keep things organized. Most of them just simply live out of that task page on their mobile phone. You as an administrator will be going through the scheduling or going through the project timelines to get a project project view or to get a worker based view to find your resources and go ahead and apply those um, you know schedule schedulable items to those workers. In this case let's go ahead and click on the schedule page on the left hand side. What you'll see here is worth the week view. So we have several different tabs up at the top, but I'll just quickly call out that we have Andy here, Tom, uh, Jeremy. There's these different people. If I click on one, you'll see their day or their, their week is highlighted blue. And then you'll see these tags underneath. In this case, Tom is an estimator and a project manager, but Andy does demo. He's a drywall installer, a carpenter, and others. Um, and then that is the trades that are associated with these people. From their user account on the employee page, you can tag them by the type of work that they do and create any custom tags up to and including crew tags. So maybe three people work together in a crew, they always work together. You could have Andy's crew. And then every time you would use our filter, you could filter by Andy's crew here or by uh, saved filters as well. So in this case, I have one called employees. This just pulls up everybody who's an employee within our system. And that's a saved filter that I use all the time. If I were to add additional options, um, maybe specifically a couple of projects that I wanted to have in here, I could save this as a filter myself. And now this becomes an option. And I could also rename this filter to anything that I'd like. In this case, I'll just get rid of this filter because we don't need it in the system here, but it's just a good uh, way to show you how that works. Now I'll go ahead and clear out this filter also, and then briefly explain the different options that we have at the top. So there's an expanded view here. There's also a compact view. This is just simply showing the task name and how long it's for. I often operate out of the expanded view because it's the most simple. That's the, um, you know, the, the way that I can find out, okay, where's my worker? What are they doing? What's coming up and what's in the past? Um, in this case, you'll see on this task, that's associated, it says paint, it's from 8 a.m. for four hours, it's in Seattle, and it's associated with the Rick Grimes project. If I wanted to, I could pick this up and move it around in the week view to a different person, a different day, very simply, or I could simply double click on it, and this would open up just the standard task editor. This is how you would add a task from the task page or even from the project timeline and then you could choose a name and all the different options here and uh, you can still edit those same things from the standard task editor and it will reflect in the schedule and vice versa. Uh, and then additionally up here, you can see there's sort options. So we have sort by trade, hours scheduled, first or last name, etc. And then you can also flip the sort order over. So say you want it from last to first or from first to last. You could do it that way or by hours of scheduled most busy or least busy. Um, so those are a couple different options there. And then there's always the handy today button. It just takes you right to today. So say we were one or two weeks off. If we hit today, it just takes us right back to today. Um, and then there's the next and previous week, but additionally you can move around on the timeline up here. In the week view, it moves it from Sunday to Saturday sets. So this week, next week, the following week, and so on. And then additionally, we could go up to the month view. 
This is what we like to call the heat map. Uh, in this case, I can see how busy everybody is. I can see that Leslie's booked out for nine hours a day for all the office work that she's doing here as she's the office manager. So she always has something scheduled. Now I can see that Tom today has something scheduled, but tomorrow I gotta find work for Tom and Andy and Ann Perkins. Uh, so there's quite a few things here that are left uh, to be scheduled out and I can immediately see that in the heat map view. Now I could also go back to the week view and there's a couple of options in the week view here. I could click on the you know specific title above the day uh, that would take us to the day view. You'll see it's highlighted blue and it says C day. Or I could as well click the drop down here for the different options and go to the day view. In the day view, you can see that these are grayed out because the day the the today line has gone past the end of the task. If I were to actually take one of these and um, extend it past, uh, then it would retain its color saying it's no longer overdue or it's no longer in the past. Um, so this is now something that's an active thing still. And then additionally, uh, the other view we could look at here is the calendar view. In this case, this is just everything going on. A calendar can be limited. Uh, you have to either expand it or compact it to make it fit on the screen if you'd like to do that. But what happens is there's only so much space. So you could open it up so you could see everything that's within that day or you could flip different things on and off for visibility. Some people really just love to use this view to see their start and end dates for projects. So we're gonna end jobs here, we're gonna start jobs further down, uh, or they would maybe just like to toggle visibility and only see tasks from the projects, just showing the name of the task, what day they're on, and they use the colors to keep track of all of that. So there's a lot of different functionality here that we can make this calendar view work for us. Or another thing that's really useful is um, um, having everything on and using the filter to specifically look at one job. In this case, the Bob Vance project started on Monday and it ends on the next Friday. And then we can see what's going on in every single day here. And then uh, we could as well clear the filter and get us back to the standard. And then there's an option here. Um, we won't cover it now, but it says go to the project month view. This is just a link to take us over to the project based month calendar, which is another option that we'll cover in the projects based calendar. And that's all the different calendar options here in Project. If you have any questions at all, feel free to call us and we're happy to help you, uh, you know, figure out the best way for scheduling for your company, help set things up in regard to tagging your workers and organizing your people and contractors, etc. Thanks for watching.